Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Jeff at Mississippi in the Civil War. Hope everyone is having a great weekend. And uh, since the Halloween uh, holiday is almost upon us, I wanted to do a uh, special program that had sort of a Halloween theme. And uh, something immediately came to mind, and uh, it's something a little bit different. But I am going to read you a poem. And uh, this is a Halloween-themed poem, but it does have Civil War connections. And this Halloween uh, poem is called The Spectral Army, and it was written by S. Newton Berryhill. And uh, Berryhill was born in Choctaw, uh, what is now uh, Webster County, uh, on October 22, 1832. As a child, uh, he was afflicted with what was termed a uh, serious spinal uh, problem, which left him unable to walk. But uh, because uh, of this, uh, this affliction, uh, Barry Hill was not able to be a soldier during the Civil War, but he was an ardent supporter of the Confederacy. And his first uh, book of poetry was a uh, modest volume with the uh, title, The Vision of Blood, which was published by John N. Bowen at uh, the Southern Motive Office in Grenada in 1864. But uh, his best known work was actually published just after the Civil War, uh, known as Backwoods Poems, which was published in 1878. Uh, the following uh, poem uh, was one of uh, but many excellent verses uh, that were published in this work. Uh, in uh, The Spectral Army, uh, Barry Hill alludes to his brother, and that brother was Lieutenant William Harvey Barry Hill, who served in Company D of the 43rd Mississippi Infantry, who was unfortunately killed at the Battle of Nashville on December 15, 1864. But uh, without any further ado, uh, let's get started uh, with the, uh, the poem. This is The Spectral Army by S. Newton Berryhill. The deep-toned clock strikes twelve, the winds are lulled to rest. And the cuspate moon, long past her noon, slinks slowly in the west. Like serpents on the ground, the lengthening shadows creep. Each shrub assumes a phantom form to eyes that cannot sleep. That cannot sleep tonight, for the spirit's wild unrest, the grief for stricken motherland which weighs upon my breast, which weighs more heavy now while all is still around, and the mind turns inward on itself, unswayed by sight or sound. But hark upon the hills, a rustling sound is heard, like the noise of trees when by the breeze the frost browned leaves are stirred. And now a bugle blast and a muffled drum I hear, and soon dark moving lines of men upon the hills appear. From every battlefield, in solemn long array, at the top tap of the drum, they come, they come, the men that wore the gray. The men that wore the gray, that died our land to save, have heard the clanking of our chains and come from the silent grave. The flag they love so well, above them floats once more. And the starry cross shines bright again as it shone in days of yore. Oh, how my spirit yearns at many a once loved face, looks on me from the spectral lines that move with measured pace. My brother, brave and kind, and ever to duty true, one moment halts and lifts his hand to wave a last adieu. On, on, still they come, like the flow of a mighty stream and the burnished guns and bayonets in the silvery moonlight gleam. The prancing steeds move by, the cannon's lumbering car, caisson and ambulance and all the upper tenants of war. Here Stonewall Jackson rides in the quaint old garb he wore when he hurled his ranks against the foe on Shenandoah shore. And Sidney Johnston there, his gleaming saber draws, the noblest man that ever died for freedom's holy cause. On a snowy steed I see, robed in a sable gown, the martyr polk, blessed man of God, wearing a starry crown. Here Zolikoffer moves, 
calm as a summer morn, and Patrick Claiborne, bravest son of the isle where he was born. The Christian warrior hill and B together ride. Stuart, Virginia's cavalier, and Ashby by his side. Garnett and Hanson now upon the scene appear, and Barkstall waves his sword and smiles as if the foe were near. McCulloch rushes by, and McIntosh the brave, and Hatton leads the long brigade that with him found a grave. John Morgan come, that foes, fear stricken hold their breath, and Adam spurs the steed which leaped into the jaws of death. The long, long spectral lines at last have all passed by, and the moon has dipped one silver horn beneath the western sky. The shadows of the trees have mingled on the ground, and the faint and fainter on the hills now grows the rustling sound. The roll of the muffled drum in the distance dies away, and veil of night conceals from sight the men that wore the gray. O gallant men in gray, our country's hope and pride, time cannot mar the laurels green which crown ye when ye died. The cause for which ye bled shall rise from the dust again. The God is just in whom we trust. Ye have not died in vain. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little poem, uh, The Spectral Army by S. Newton Berryhill. If you haven't uh, uh, subscribe to my uh, channel. I wish you would go ahead and do so if you like the content. Uh, please give it also a thumbs up. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I'll be glad to answer uh, any questions you might have. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Bye.